This video is presented by the Texas AgriLife Extension Service. Water quantity as well as water quality is one of those things that we are all concerned with. As our population grows, we are going to become more and more concerned with it. And so one of the things that's become very popular lately is the use of rain barrels. Uh, rain barrels now are getting into where our chain stores are selling them. Local uh, stores are selling, providing those. Uh, it's become a very popular thing to do. And so we can buy one and then put it up, but we can also use something recycled like one of these three uh, and build our own barrel to start off with. So we're going to go through the process of building one that is totally closed container, one that has a lid like this here, and then another one that has a smaller lid, and we'll, we'll use each one of these here as we demonstrate how to make a rain barrel. The first barrel that we're going to make is one that has a total closed lid with two uh, smaller uh, connections there at the top. This is very similar to one that you might get soft drinks in that you find that where they make a, a soft drinks, uh, have other materials, uh, sugars and things like that in them. So this will be the first one. The first thing I want to remember though that it needs to be one that is food grade, that it did not have any chemicals or oils in it uh, because those need to be disposed of according to the directions from those. In making this here, the parts that we're going to use, first we're going to cut a hole in the top that a one gallon pot is going to fit into. And so to do that, we can, we're going to be able to cut a hole and you can use any of the three things here. One is a hole saw that you can go ahead and mark and then cut out the center of it. Uh, we can use a jigsaw after we mark it as well. And so we could cut out the hole there to fit that one gallon pot. Or today we're going to go ahead and just use a uh, six inch hole saw. This is, uh, unless you're building lots of them, you probably don't want to use this here, but it's one that gives us a very smooth round hole, and so that's what we'll use on that. Then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to need an overflow. And so we're going to put one that's going to be down low enough, especially when our pot uh, is in here, that the water could be in here, that we want to make sure that drain is low enough, and so that the water does not stand in this pot if the storage tank is full. And so to do that there, we've got several parts that we're going to use. I like to use a two inch overflow simply because that allows the water to come from this downspout to be able to go out the side rather than fill up over the top and then run over. And so with that there, we're going to have three parts that are four parts that we're going to use. One is going to be a connection. That's going to be male threads and then a slip on the other end of it. That's going to slide into the hole that we're going to cut. It's going to be a two and three eighths inch hole. Inside this here, if we cut it into this side, slide it in, inside we're going to have a two inch electric conduit nut that will fit on the inside and then tighten to the inside. Then from there, the outside, we cut a very small two inch piece of a, a PVC pipe that will extend to that. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and, and send that water down. And from there, we're going to go ahead and, and drop that water on down uh, to the point that we can distribute that water uh, either to the plants or into a dry stream bed, or if we're going to, we can go straight from here and then connect into our next barrel as well. So that'll be our overflow, and we have the water going in. And then thirdly, we're going to connect the faucet there close to the bottom. We're using a three-quarter inch faucet with male threads. I like the brass faucets because these threads will help cut through the PVC. With this three-quarter inch faucet, we're going to use a 15 16 inch paddle bit uh, and we'll cut that hole closer to the bottom. Now, we won't put it right at the very bottom simply because we want to leave water in the bottom so that it will hold it in place if we get a big wind and it's close to empty. Also with that there, if there's any sediment that ends in the bottom, uh, the faucet will be above that level. And then thirdly then, if we can, we can keep uh, the faucet, we will look at turning it to the side or to the bottom uh, and looking at the, if a hose or a pipe is connected to it, uh, it will bend and crimp, and so if I can turn it to the side, it's more likely then I can run it on out. And so those are things that we'll look at from that end of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in the top. Remember that this has very sharp teeth on it. This is a very large saw, so we need to be very careful. Make sure there's not anyone else that might have their hands exposed to it. Uh, in cutting also, this, these teeth will grab very hard as it race into the PVC. So once I get this pilot hole drill, then I'm going to turn it in reverse and cut it backwards.
have the, the inlet holes cut for the rain barrel. The next thing we're going to do is switch to the, what size is that? Two and three eighths. Next we're going to switch to a two and three eighths inch hole saw for the overflow. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and lay the barrel on its side so that it doesn't move as we're doing that to make it a little bit safer. And we're going to put the overflow at a 90 degree angle from where the inlet hole is. And we're going to make sure and put it far enough down the barrel so that as our flower pot sits in this hole, the debris will not be sitting in the water. Now that we have our overflow hole cut, now we can go ahead and add a small bead of silicone around the edge of the two inch um, male coupling. And then on the back side of that, we're going to use a two inch electrical conduit nut to secure it to the barrel. With this connection, we can utilize two inch PVC, a small uh, cutting of that. We can slip into this fitting, and then from there, we can go down and overflow the water straight to the ground, or we can potentially hook this up and overflow into another rain barrel. One thing that you want to keep in mind um, with the rain barrels is that for every gallon of water you have, it weighs about eight and a half pounds. And so it can be very heavy. So you want to make sure that you have a stable base that this is on. And that if you have water, as you have water overflowing, you don't want that to erode the base and cause it to, to tip over and possibly hurt someone. And so you want to make sure that you control where your overflow goes to. Next, we're going to go ahead and cut the hole for the three quarter inch hose bib. And to do that, we're going to use a 15 16 inch paddle bit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put it uh, as if the house was on the back side with the downspout. We'll then put the outlet on the opposite side. And so again, we'll lay down the barrel just to make sure it's safe. Uh, we're going to put it up from the bottom about four to five inches. So that way that we have any sediment or debris. And you can see that Billy has drilled the hole about four or five inches above the bottom so that one, if you have any sediment or debris that collects in your rain barrel, you won't necessarily collect it out of the bottom. Secondly, you want to raise it up just a little bit. You want to keep a little bit of water in the tank so that if you have a storm um, come at a time with high winds where you don't have very much water in the tank that it won't tip over as easily. And then lastly, you want to raise it up slightly so that whenever you go to put a bucket underneath, that you'll have space to do that. Or you can also turn the hose bib sideways so that way you have a little bit more clearance and your hose doesn't go straight into the ground. It can come out the side and, and we'll put a kink in your hose right away. What Billy's done here is since we've cut the, the hole a little bit smaller than the size of the threads, uh, it's an interference fit. And so you have to push very hard to get the threads to grab into the plastic. And he's done that here. And he's pointed it sideways, so as we have our hose, it'll come out the side, go wherever we want to, instead of coming out the bottom and hitting the ground. The next thing that we're going we're to show you is here in this pre-made version, we have a small piece of screen that we've cut and put inside the bottom of the flower pot. And so that way, if you catch any debris or trash or bugs, um, you can capture that, dump it out, and then put it back to keep your water as clean as possible. It will also help in keeping mosquitoes out of your rain barrel. First thing Billy's going to do is he's going to put a small bead of silicone along the inside around the edge of the flower pot and then he's going to put a small dab in the center. And so he's going to utilize the screen, the window screen that he's cut. He's going to fold it up into a parachute like uh, shape so that way as he puts it down into the flower pot the center dab of silicone grabs first, and then he can spread it out along the edge so that all the edges are sealed as well. So 
So now you have your, uh, the basic components of your completed rain barrel. You have a way for the water to get into your rain barrel to keep the bugs, mosquitoes, uh, any leaves or debris out. Uh, you have a way for the water to safely overflow uh, so you can direct that water away from the foundation of the tank so that it doesn't cause any destructions there. And you also have an effective way to get water out of your rain barrel. And so, so that's the, one of the versions of a rain barrel. You can modify this to your, fit your own situation or needs. As you look into making your own rain barrel, there's a number of different types of rain barrels that you'll find out on the market. Uh, as we get into the reuse products, a lot of times uh, we utilize whatever we can find the quickest. And so as you can see here, we have the closed top that we've demonstrated how to make a rain barrel. And here you have uh, typically one downspout uh, going into this end of here. But as you get into other situations and you find other barrels, um, here this is not a sealed top. You have a snap ring going around the edge and it's actually completely removable. And so to utilize this rain barrel, you can simply drape your window screen across the entire top of the rain barrel and then secure your snap ring around the edge to allow water to flow in. So if you have an eave of your house that comes together, you can have water enter in a larger area. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, pets or are worried about animals possibly sitting or laying on top of the rain barrel, then what you can do is you can utilize almost the same technique that we have there and kind of mix the two. You can use a, a larger uh, hole saw or a, a jigsaw or a hand saw to cut multiple holes in the top. And so you can actually utilize both techniques. You can have multiple holes in the top so you have a larger surface area for water to go into the barrel. You can still utilize the screen over the entire area, but the part of the lid that you leave intact will add a little bit of strength so if you have an animal lay on top of the rain barrel, they won't necessarily fall into the barrel. Uh, another type of rain barrel we have here is actually a barrel with a screw-on type lid. And again, you can typically do the same thing. You can cut either one large hole or numerous smaller holes into the top to keep the structure, drape the window screen over the top, and then screw it back on. And so as you can see, there are many different ways to make a rain barrel. I want to re-emphasize safety factors that we need to consider. First of all, let's make sure that we keep it screened so the mosquitoes do not get in there. That's the first and most important thing. And so we've got to have a screen uh, to prevent them from getting in. Second thing is remember that this is non-potable water, that it's not safe to drink. We're getting oftentimes the first water that comes off of the roof of the building. And so whenever we have the water coming out, we need to make sure that we uh, have it labeled so that it's non-potable water. Also, if there's children there that might be uh, have access to it, we might want to take the handle off at the same time. And so also, then the third thing is that we want to make sure that we do is whenever we build the bases here that, so that this uh, uh, storage tank uh, is safe, not easily rocked over, when we start looking at the weight of this water, that that base has to be very sturdy, very strong, and so then it does not have a chance of tipping over. So those three things we need to remember. Keep the mosquitoes out of it, make sure that it is non-potable water, that no one drinks this water, and that it's securely fastened uh, and braced down so that it does not have a chance of tipping over. One other thing that we didn't mention earlier there, that as we put the faucet in, uh, that uh, uh, we first cut it in with the threads, and then we can go ahead and bring it back out, put Teflon tape around it, and then put it back in uh, to make sure that it's sealed very tightly and that way we will prevent any leaks from taking place. And now we have a rain barrel and we're ready for the rain.